Hey, today I wanted to give you an overview of my recent blood test results to help you get a better idea of what to ask your doctor for when you go in to get your blood tested and also to give you an idea of what to ask for if you're concerned about your overall health and longevity. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Melanie from Female Fitness Systems and here on this YouTube channel we talk a lot about nutrition, fitness and longevity. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so you catch future videos from me. Before we get into my results, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. The first thing is that what I'm going to do today is give you my interpretation of my tests. I'm by no means an expert and if you want to deep dive into anything I talk about today or any of your own test results, then you should do a, a Google search, have a good look at some videos here on YouTube because there are certainly a lot of people who go more into depth and are certainly much more knowledgeable than I am. What I wanted to do today is just give you a really good overview of what you should be looking for if you're new to interpreting your own blood test results. The other thing that I wanted to mention before we get started is something that's super important to understand and that is the reference ranges. So when you go for blood test results, you're going to see your result compared to a reference range. And that reference range is derived from the average population. And as we're gonna talk about throughout this video, sometimes falling in the average range is not necessarily optimal, especially if you're concerned about longevity. So that's why I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you go get your blood test results and have a look at them for yourself. If you fall within the normal range, there's a high chance that your doctor is not going to let you know what your results were. And if you are on this extreme end of a reference range, it could be that you potentially have a problem coming and it would be great to be preventative and know about it. And so it's really important that you take matters into your own hand, get your blood test results, have a good look through them. And if you do fall on the extreme edge of anything, then it's worth doing a bit of a Google search and figuring out if that is potentially an issue for you or potentially it could also be a good thing to be on the extreme edge of normal. The first test that I wanted to talk about today is ferritin. It's the one that I tell my clients to go get the most often. Ferritin is a measure of iron and it's the one that your doctor is most likely to order if you're concerned about your iron levels. You know, having good iron levels is so important for your energy, your mood, your anxiety, and so much more. And if you're a woman who has regular cycles, then it's super important that you get your iron levels checked regularly. And it's surprising how many doctors don't actually order this just as routine. And so make sure that when you go in to get blood test results that it is being ordered for you. And the other thing that I would mention is that even if you aren't bleeding, as my experience is going to demonstrate, it's important that you get it tested, especially if you're somebody who doesn't eat a lot of red meat and if you're somebody who exercises hard because exercise depletes your iron levels and that includes both weight training and running because the pounding of your feet on pavement can deplete your iron levels. So for those of you who know about my journey over the last 10 years, I've had super heavy periods and my iron levels, my ferritin has always been a super low, like around six to nine. And I hadn't had a period for the last year. And even though I hadn't been bleeding, I have been supplementing just not as often as I used to. I've been taking iron probably every second day because I knew that with all the training that I do that I was still depleting my iron and I'm not a big meat eater. So it's something that I'm probably always going to have to supplement with. And I assumed that my iron was going to be okay, but the reason I actually went in to get blood tests was that I was super fatigued for a couple of weeks. And so I thought potentially my iron levels were low and my ferritin came back at 36, which is higher than it's been in the last 10 years and is within the normal range, but it's on the low side of normal. And obviously for me, it was far from optimal because I had been feeling awful. And so I've upped my iron supplementation and I'm feeling much better. But again, this demonstrates why it's important to know your levels and 
how the reference range may not necessarily be ideal. One other thing to note about iron as well is don't just go and supplement with it because being too high in iron is not a good thing either. So it's really important that you test this one regularly so that you just know where you fall. Another test that's really common is TSH. So this is a test that your doctor will order if they're checking out how your thyroid is working. Now TSH isn't going to give you a whole picture of what's going on, but it's usually the one that they order to just see if there's a potential problem. One of the things about TSH is that uh, there's a bit of controversy and disagreement as to what is actually the optimal level of TSH. So it may be that you have symptoms but you fall within the normal range and so it might be worth following up with your doctor and pushing for further tests. So for example, with myself, I have a high TSH, it always falls on the high side of the reference ranges here in New Zealand, which would actually be outside the reference range of some countries and signify a potential problem with my thyroid. But I don't actually have any other symptoms and so I don't follow up with it. This is where my TSH has sat for ever since I've been blood testing and so I'm not worried about mine, but that may not be the case for you. So if you have symptoms, if you have potential thyroid issues, then it's worth following up. And what should be done in that case is further blood tests. They should also be testing your T4, your T3, and your thyroid antibodies to find out what's actually potentially going on. And in the past, I have had all of these tests. This time around, I had my T4 and T3 tested as well, and those all fell within the normal range. And in the past, my thyroid antibodies have been normal too. So I don't really worry about mine, but it's really important that you get the whole picture of what's going on if you do have thyroid issues or symptoms of thyroid problems. The other thing that I will say when it comes to thyroid testing is that in my experience, this is one that you have to be proactive with your doctor about. It's something that you may have to ask for if you want these further testing, like the thyroid antibodies, that's not often done in my experience. And so you may have to ask for it. And this is a case where you are going to have to go into an appointment with your doctor knowledgeable. And in my experience, when I have clients with thyroid problems, the ones that do the best are the ones that are so knowledgeable about thyroid tests and thyroid medication and what their levels should be that they can go in and tell their doctor what they want. They're the ones that are super proactive about their health. Another test that I always ask for is B12. So most people know that B12 is important for energy, but it's also actually really important for longevity. Having low B12 is linked to things like cognitive impairment, to Alzheimer's, it's linked to neurological problems. So this is one that is really important that you get within the optimal range. And this is one where the reference range is not so great. So a lot of the population is low in vitamin B12 and falls on the lower side of normal. And it's not great to be there. In general, when you, you look at the longevity research, it's better to be on the high side of the reference range. And so this is something that you would want to check out and also stay on top of. So for me personally, I always fall on the high side of the reference range. In fact, this time around, I was slightly outside of it on the high side because I supplement with B12. And so I'm going to drop my supplementation a little bit given that I'm higher than I need to be, but it's one that I test every time because it's super important. Another test that I wanted to talk about today is vitamin D. Now, I didn't actually get this test this time around, but I wanted to mention it because I have had it in the past and I didn't ask for it this time around because it's actually quite hard to get. Most countries are going away from ordering vitamin D tests, which is bizarre to me given how important it is for your overall health. But I wanted to mention it today because if you can get it, then get it. 
And how you're going to likely be able to get it is to lean on having a risk factor. So if you have a risk factor, if you know that you are um, somebody who has, say for example, osteoporosis in the family, then you could push having that as a risk factor and see if your doctor will order it. Now in some countries, they'll actually let you get it if you pay for it and it's only about $30. So it's worth saying to your doctor, I'll pay extra if I need to get it because knowing your vitamin D levels is super important. I wasn't too worried about it this time around because I supplement with vitamin D and I make sure that I expose myself to the sun and it's summer here so I had been getting lots of sunshine so I knew my levels were going to be good and so I didn't ask for it but I wanted to mention it today because it's super, super important. What I wanted to do now is shift into a bit more of the test that might show you how well you're aging. And the first one that I wanted to talk about is your HbA1c. This is a pretty common test. Your doctors are probably going to be happy to order this for you. This is a test of your blood sugar over the last couple of months. So it's going to show how well you've been managing your blood glucose. And this will show if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, but having high HbA1c has also been linked to things like cancer and cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's and just overall inflammation. So it's one that you want to get tested and know your levels and try to make sure that you aren't on the high side of the reference range, hopefully sitting somewhere on the lower side of it. Sometimes doctors will order fasting glucose, but the cool thing about the HbA1c is that you don't have to fast before your blood test, and because it's a measure of the past couple of months, it's less influenced by what you've been doing the, the day before the day of your test, whereas fasting glucose can be influenced by other things. So that's one of the benefits to the HbA1c test. And for me personally, I've always fallen on the low side of it and I think that's super important because if you're on the high side you're potentially moving into having problems with your blood sugar management which is not where you want to be. So get that one checked if you can. I think it's a great one to give you an overall view of your health and how you're aging. Another test that is reasonably common and a good indicator of how you're aging is the C-reactive protein test, also called CRP. So this is a measure of your overall inflammation in the body and it can also show if you have any infections. It's a, a general indicator, so it doesn't tell you anything specific, but it's one that doctors will order if they're trying to figure out if you've got uh, some kind of inflammation in your body. The reason that I got this one this time around is because I had mentioned to my doctor that I had had some joint flare-ups after my separation last year and all of the stress that I had been through and I just wanted to test to see how I was doing with everything and so this is one that they will order if you are potentially concerned for arthritis. Now, thankfully, mine came back very low. This is one where we need to talk about reference ranges again because being high in the reference range may be less than ideal. Even being around three, which is considered normal, may not be ideal because being under one has been shown to show a much lower risk for things like heart attack and stroke and for overall disease in general. So this is one where you want to be a very low. And so this is a great test to know your numbers. I was really happy to see mine was only 0.6 because that really allayed my concerns about arthritis. It's not definitive, but it's a good sign that I'm doing well overall with my inflammation. The final test I wanted to talk about is one that I have never had before, but it's one that could be common as you get older. It is the anti-nuclear antibody test. And the reason they do this test is to test for autoimmune conditions and potentially infections as well. Sort of like the CRP, it's not specific, so it doesn't actually tell you what's going on, but it could just be a sign that something is going on. 
I was hesitant to get this one because I knew that it could potentially come back positive and then I could be worried about things like lupus and arthritis, but I did actually go into the appointment with the goal of getting my inflammation levels tested. And so when my doctor wanted to order it, I, I let her put it on the list and I got tested for it. And unfortunately, I came back positive on the test, which is a sign that potentially something could be going on, but it may be just a false positive. And the fact that I don't have other symptoms, like at the moment my joints are fine and I don't have any other symptoms of inflammation, we're not going to worry about my test result, but it is something that I may get in the future. The other thing that you should know about this is that this test can come back positive if you have endometriosis and I have had mild endometriosis, and so that could be the reason that my test has come back positive as well. But I thought it was worth mentioning because I know that as we get older, a lot of us are going to unfortunately develop arthritis, and it is one that may well come up on your blood tests, and so I thought you should know about it. And again, there are so many great YouTube videos that dive into the test results more so you can understand what they could potentially mean for you and whether or not you should be concerned about your test results. So hopefully you found this video helpful. It's so important that you're proactive when it comes to blood testing and your overall health. Your doctors are not necessarily going to order these tests for you. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what you might ask for. And it's also super, super, super important that you go get those results and start diving into them for yourself so that you know what's going on and do more research if you need to and get on top of things. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.